the ultimate 3D printing showdown. FDM versus resin. Ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, waiting in with a massive build volume and unmatched strength, we have the FDM Titan. And in the red corner, bringing unparalleled detail and precision, the master of miniature, Resin King, who will take the belt in today's 3D printing showdown. Let's find out. Hello, I'm Bruno Boas, co-founder of STLflix, and today we're diving in in one of the most debated topics in 3D printing, FDM versus resin. Which technology is better? In this video, I'll break down how each technology works, their strengths and weaknesses, and where they shine. Whether you're new to 3D printing or a seasoned maker, stick around and you will know exactly which side of the ring you are on. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button and subscribe for more. So round one, how do they work? In this opening round, both fighters step into the ring showing their techniques. FDM, the powerhouse, the brawler, comes in with raw strength and endurance, using its heated nozzle to lay down layer by layer like a relentless jab. Meanwhile, Razin, the technical genius, counters with precision, carefully crafting each layer with UV light like a master of submission holes. It's technique versus power. FDM works by heating plastic filament, which is extruded layer by layer to build the object. The nozzle moves along three axes, X, Y, and Z, to shape the model. You will find affordable options like Reality Ender Series, for example, which is perfect for beginners, as well as high-end printers like the Bumble Lab X1 Carbon and the Prusa XL, which also allows for multicolor printing. And if you're looking for something in the middle, there's also this one, the Bamboo Lab A1 Series, offering multicolor printing at a great price. Resin printing, on the other hand, uses liquid resin cured layer by layer with UV lights. The object forms upside down, which is very cool to see emerging slowly from the resin bed, almost like a sci-fi movie. It's like watching a sculpture come to life. Popular models include the Anycubic Photon Mono X2 and the Alago Saturn II. Now it's time for round two, materials and applications. In this round, it's all about strategy. FDM, the versatile fighter, brings an arsenal of tools, PLA for quick moves, ABS for durability, and TPU for flexibility. FDM printers shine in creating large objects and mechanical parts and functional prototypes. Resin, on the other hand, is the specialist. It doesn't waste time with flashy moves, but lends precise, game-changing hits in dental work, jewelry, and miniatures. Its materials include standard resin, flexible resins, and even castable options for jewelry making. Make sure to research that, because that's very cool. So FDM is the all-rounder, while Resin is the sniper. What's your next project? Drop a comment down below, and I'll help you decide if it's for FDM or for Resin. Round three, print size and volume. Here's where we test the reach. FDM is the heavyweight champion, capable of massive strikes. Entry-level models typically have a build size of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, which is incredibly wide if you compare it to the rest. But larger machines, like the Creality CR10, for example, can print up to 400 millimeters. And we also have the Gigastore Mega, they can print up to one meter cubic. And if you want something even bigger, the Creality CR10 has an infinite Z-axis that you can print as long as you want thanks to its conveyor belt system, which is very cool. Resin, on the other hand, is the agile featherweight, throwing sharp, detailed punches. Most desktop models offer build volumes around 120 by 68 by 150 millimeters. High-end options like the Alego Saturn II push these limits, but still focus on precision over size. So in this fight, FDM dominates with size, but resin dominates on details. Round four, easy of use. Here we're talking stamina and technique. FDM enters the fight with solid fundamentals. It might take a while, might take a little extra training to get started, calibrating the bed, testing the settings, but once you're set, the process is very straightforward. Most prints are ready to use straight off the bed with minimal post-process. Resin, however, has a more grueling preparation and post-fight rituals as well. After printing, you need to clean the objects in alcohol, water, cure it under UV light, and deal with the sticky mess left behind. As you can see in this one, we even have some sticky film around it. Devices like the Anycube Wash and Cure help you to make this process easier, but it's still time intensive and messy. So while FDM requires more initial setup, it might take you a while to actually get it work, its overall workflow is infinitely simpler than rest. Round five, cost. This is an important one. So now let's talk about money. FDM fights smart entering the ring with an affordable game plan. Entry-level printers like the Creality Ender 3v2, for example, 
costs around $200 to $300. And filaments are extremely budget friendly, starting at $20 a spool, but you can get prices lower than that. And resin printers, like the Alago Mars 3, for example, they cost between $300 and $400, with resin bottles priced at $35 to $50. While resin offers better detail, it's more expensive in the long run due to material and post-processing costs. So the final verdict, who wins this battle? The answer, obviously, it depends on your needs. FDM is perfect for functional, large-scale projects, while resin excels in fine details and specialized applications. And if you're smart, you can also use both technologies together. As an example, if you're doing an architectural model, you could use the FDM to create the building and the structure and resin for the detail elements like small little people, uh, trees, cars that could be around that building. So you can combine them both to extract the best of both worlds as well. And now I have two makers here by my side, Thomas and Edson, and each one, they prefer one of these technologies. So I'm going to ask them, what is the main reason they prefer one technology over the other? Thomas, why do you prefer FDM? I prefer FDM because it's much easier to work with, and you can increase the price significantly depending on the piece and the painting you can do on it. Can you explain me a little bit better? Well, you can print a large dragon, which will already grab attention due to its size. You could use a silk filament, dual color or tricolor, which will make it stand out even more. And depending on the painting job, it increases the value even further, making it possible to raise the price of the piece. That's cool. And Edson, why do you prefer resin printing? In my case, I prefer resin for action figures. The quality resin provides for action figures makes it better for creating a more polished piece when painting and for the piece itself when displayed. I find that more appealing and interesting for me. Nice. And to make money, why do you think the FDM is better? The cost of filament is much lower than resin. Printing is also easier since you don't need extensive knowledge for long prints or certain pieces. Additionally, the waste is lower compared to resin. And for you, why do you think this one is better to make money? Yeah, it's about the details, really. I think it looks better and it delivers a better result. Not that FDM is worse, but uh, in terms of action figure quality, resin makes for a more attractive result and adds more value. Um, for my needs, an action figure would look better in resin than in filament or FDM. So what do you think? Does this make sense to you? If you want to take your 3D printing skills to the next level, check out STL Academy, where we offer courses designed to help you master both FDM and resin printing. And let us know in the comments what you like to see next. Your ideas might inspire my next future video. In this ring, there is no loser. FDM and resin each bring their strengths to the table. But the real champion is you, the maker. See you in the next round. Bye.